Hello and welcome to Partnerships for Smarter Recovery. This is the next segment in a four-part series brought to you by Tel Dell Technologies. And with me today are two guests, Jim McGann, who's the Vice President of Strategic Partnerships at Index Engines, and Steve Penniston, Senior Cybersecurity Consultant with Dell. Gents, welcome. Thanks for coming into the studio today. Thanks, Dave. We'll always love to have you guys face-to-face. -face. So, you know, in this series, we're exploring not only the importance of cybersecurity, but how to create business resilience and protect organizations in this era of real-time, in-the-moment events that scale so quickly across an organization, an ecosystem, as we've seen before. And so, Jim, before we get into it, I wonder if you could just tell us a little bit about your background and in Index Engines. Sure. Yeah, I've been with Index Engines for almost 20 years now, so it's been a while. Uh, the company was really built to add the capability to, uh, obviously, index data in the enterprise. Um, and make it searchable, make it usable, make it safe and secure and, and have integrity. Um, we have a um, partnership with Dell that we've had since uh, this partnership with our cyber product since 2018. Um, and it's, it's been a great relationship. Yeah. So I wonder, Steve, I think the audience knows you, but, uh, but I wonder if I can get you to react to something here uh, before we get deep into our conversation. This is a data graph from our partners at ETR. And what we did here is we explored a small sample of customers. It's an, only an N of 105, but they're hardcore data practitioners. But we wanted to understand how they thought about security and governance and, and with respect to data. And so what you see here is on the left-hand side of the chart, it says security and privacy of our data is the first consideration. That's 86% of the respondents. 70% said we always think about governance before making any investments in technology. And then all the way to the right, you can see that 14%. Data security is less important uh, than creating a stack that allows for rapid innovation. So that's a small minority. The vast majority of customers that I talk to, Steve, put security up top. H how do you respond to this data? What do you think? I have to, uh, ultimately, I totally agree. I mean, I talk to probably 10 customers a week ongoing, and every single one of them has security on the brain, right? It's, it's, it's the most important thing that they think about as they're looking at putting in or introducing new technologies. And it's not just for new projects, it's for how are we advancing our security maturity for the existing things that they have? Because they wanna make sure that everything in their environment is secure. And they wanna have good security hygiene across their, their entire organization. So this series, we're talking about data protection. And this data that we just showed you is, yeah, it's about security and governance and privacy. So how should we think about data protection in the context of security and governance, where does it fit? I think they kind of all go hand in hand. It, in other words, you, you don't see a lot of customers that kind of separate them. Jim, I don't know, may, maybe maybe you, you see a little, bit, a little bit more, but a lot of times having that control over their data, knowing that, that it's where it needs to be, it's protected, and that they can rely on it for governance, for things that are going to affect them, for... Uh, any any number of things, they want to be able to make sure that that data set is secure. It's it's what it was when they put it in there, and it's safe and it's solid. So, Jim, Index Engines, um, did you have a comment on that? Yeah, what? no, I, I, I think you know, I think if you look at when we talk to customers, you know, there's the security teams that are trying to keep the bad actors out. That that's an admirable job, and and you've been to the RSA conference, you see all those companies um, that are that are working with them to do that. But at the end of the day they need to know that they have a good copy of data to recover. Because I think any organization that thinks that they're safe from a, a cyber attack is just fooling themselves. So today, CyberSense in the Dell Cyber Recovery Vaults is scanning over five exabytes of data every day. And that's giving customers the confidence that they can recover. And I think that's the ultimate um, the ultimate goal of any organization you know, for cyber resiliency is can you recover? And so, so you've been partnering Index Engines with Dell for several years now with CyberSense and uh, the whole cyber recovery solutions set. Can, can you talk about sort of how it came about? How's it going? What should customers know? Sure. I mean, Dell was building, you know, saw the need in the market to build a isolated vault uh, to protect customers' data. Um, their issue, uh, and they contacted us, we had a relationship with them saying, we want to uh, replicate data using backup software. We know the backup software doesn't have enough um, features and capabilities to, to really look at the data's integrity. So can you partner with us to do that? Uh, we did that in 20, we launched a product jointly in 2018. 
Uh, today, as I mentioned, we have over five exabytes of data scanned daily. Um, there's about 14 or 1500 customers globally from the largest airlines down to small local school systems. Um, so it, it was really, you know, Dell recognizing that the need for a data integrity scan of customer data to say, hey, we have it isolated, uh, we have it immutable, but we need the intelligence to make sure that you can recover with clean data when you get attacked. Because you need, at, after the attack is not when you want to figure out where the clean data is. You want to do that on a daily basis, proactively, so you can recover quickly. So Dell, as you mostly know, most of you know in the audience, provides the the power protect cyber recovery vault they use the term vault which resonates with people so data is isolated from bad actors but steve you know packet vendors they're all saying they're sort of not all but some are saying they're security companies now they all have sort of similar capabilities when you read the marketing material how how do you differentiate cyber sense from some of the other um competitive offerings <laughs> so i you know, I've been doing data protection for over 20 years, right, Dave? So I think um, what's really important to Dell and what's really and, and what I think CyberSense brings to the table is we don't just look at backup as taking a block of data and putting it in a box and locking it away, right? Our premise around cybersecurity and advancing that cybersecurity maturity revolves around our three practice areas, reducing the attack surface, detecting and responding, and then recovery. Right, and and Jim said it at first. Right, a lot of customers shouldn't be thinking about. I mean, we know that they're going to get penetrated. Right, you do everything you can to reduce the attack surface, but eventually they're going to get through. When they do that, right, they fall into the the detect and respond bucket. Right, and that's where CyberSense is super helpful. Right, they they go through and they scan and they see what's going on. Right, they help us detect what's going on. And because they provide the ability to get that data in the vault, like you just mentioned, it's secure, it's locked down, and, and you can recover it, right? So they help us with that full triad. And I have what what's really impressive is we look at backup as the full triad, right? A lot of these new vendors who are remarketing themselves, they look at the three things and they say, oh, well, we're in the backup, we're in the recovery slot. And ultimately, what I keep saying is, is your backup solution should provide all three. So change the lens and how you look at cybersecurity and think about, we provide multi-factor authentication, rules-based access, dual authentication. That's reducing the attack surface of your backup when you can. But as we said, they're gonna get through. The next phase is how do you detect and respond, right? And then how do you recover? And the two of the biggest legs of the stool, CyberSense helps us in inevitably. So let's talk a little bit about AI. To the AI era, the AI wave. I think AI is very much misunderstood. Uh, you know, Gen AI, I think, put it right in the forefront, made it an AI an everyday term and concept that we can touch and see and feel. But, but there's so much AI and machine learning that's embedded inside of products. And, and I've always felt like, like right now, the market's blowing up because people think there's no ROI in AI. So we spent all this money and 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 we bought all this these stocks and. And are they ever going to give us a return? Meanwhile, AI is seeping its way into everything. CyberSense is AI based uh, as a technology, and so, and 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 you're not positioning yourselves as an AI vendor, but Dell is certainly riding the AI wave with AI servers. So how, let's talk about you know this notion of AI intelligence embedded into products. How does CyberSense take advantage of AI, and and what's different about it? What's the capability? that we should know about? Yeah, I mean, cyber, CyberSense has been using AI for over five years, so before it was cool, right? So, I mean, you, you go to RSA or these conferences and we were making bets to see if someone can find a booth that didn't have AI written on the booth, right? Couldn't do it. Um, you, have, you have to ask the right questions, and I talk to customers about this all the time, about how do you train your AI? You know, I mean, there, there's, there's lots of kids that go to lots of different universities and there's different levels of training and the kid comes out differently, right? I mean. That's simple, right? So how do you train your AI? You know, we, we train our AI on actual ransomware. We date, detonate real ransomware in our lab, look at the patterns of behavior, look at what they're doing, how they're changing their attack vectors. Um, we test against all sorts of different types of sources of data. Um, and then the most important part of what CyberSense does is it is it does content-based analysis of data inside the vault. So inside databases, you know, SAP HANA databases, Oracle databases, the stuff that runs your business inside files, inside Active Directory network infrastructure. 
So even if the bad actors, and, and they are getting smarter because they're using AI as well, um, if they use really sophisticated variants, CyberSense will see that pattern. So we just issued a 99.99% SLA saying that we do not release software to our partners until we um, detect corruption with that level of confidence. So, so we use it pretty extensively and have been for over five years. You know, I want to ask, get your reaction to something. Um, you, your conversation about training your AI struck me. Last week, I was interviewing um, a thought leader, an AI a thought leader, and um, he said, think of training, because everybody talks about training and inference. Think about training as he went to school. Right. You know, yeah. he went to grade school, high school, maybe he went to college, maybe he went to graduate school. That was all your training. And then the inference is, you know, when you apply it in the real world, but to your point, people get trained differently. You might go to a, a trade school. You might be, a, you know, a math major. You yep. might be so. So training is not the same for everybody. So that's a really important question that you're asking. Yeah, I, I've talked to a number of customers, and I say, ask them exactly how they train it. And if they can't give you a straight up answer, um, they're just they're just using AI as a marketing term and and not as, as real life um, capabilities. And and with the Dell solution, you know. We have 1,400 customers that are providing data and in input back. Um, we get information from what customers are doing, what type of data they see, what activity they see. So it's it's important that that is, we have an automated process that every day we download it, any new variants that we see, train against them, make sure we have 99.99% confidence and, and and just maintain that. And that's, a, that's the commitment we make to our partners like Dell and to customers as well. I think that's an important segment too, David, because ultimately, you asked before these new vendors that are coming on marketing themselves as security companies, right? And every what I find very interesting is that AI in and of itself, because you said like Gen AI has really kind of created this thing about what is AI. AI has been in security products, not just data protection, but security for like 10 or 15 years, mm -hmm. right? This is not new, but I think what we're doing is is new What we're since 2018 and in, in putting it into, into the data protection world. But a lot of these vendors who are coming out saying that they're new and they're security companies, like Jim said, ask them, how are you training your model? Like, what are you doing? Are you just throwing some random thing at to say you're an AI data protection company? Is that really going to give you ultimately what you want to do? You know, training the model. What are you learning? How are you training it? What are you doing? Like you said, detonating these, these examples, being able to capture it, know what the path looks like, right? That's All those things become infinitely important in catching the threat actor the next time they come through. I don't know that a lot of other vendors are doing stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, I agree 100%, Steve. The, you know, they, they're using, I mean, some vendors are using AI for help files, they're using it for other things and just saying, we use AI. But, you know, the, the data that CyberSense gets when there's an attack on customer's data, that CyberSense will know the pattern of what's happened, will know exactly what files were corrupted, the time and date of corruption on what servers, what IP address, and so on. So. For a customer, all that data could be fed into their security systems, their SIM and their source systems to say, what did, what did network traffic look like that? So, you know, some of the backup vendors are just saying, hey, that snapshot or that backup looked bad, put the previous one on. And you go about your day, but what happened to what data? And exactly, I need more details so I can go in there and try to stop the next attack. And with CyberSense, you get all that because CyberSense has that granular, you know, data integrity for everything that's in the vault. Whereas others are just using, there's some indicator of a compromise that may or may not be an attack. So go just recover. You get to the why. We get to the why. And and we see customers, um, some of the uh, reports you get that when they get attacked, you know, there's the SOFUS report saying 50%, 57% of attacks are corrupting the backups. And if they do corrupt the backups, the ransom that they're charging is, is likely twice as much as they would charge other people. And if they do pay that, they're typically going to get attacked again. Um, there was one, um, it was not a customer of ours that, that uh, it was the, um, the, the, car, the car financing business got attacked. They got attacked once, they started recovering. The next week they got attacked again because they just don't have a strategy of understanding exactly what happened and get that information that'll help them become more resilient. It's really about the, the, your cyber resiliency and, and building a strategy you know, to support that. And, and, and the Dell Vault is... You know, when you're talking about backup vendors, it's like, you know, that's just really backup software. What Dell recognized is that we need to add a layer of AI-based intelligence on top of the backup software in an isolated vault and created, you know, what, what's on the market today.
Well, that gives you that forensics capability that takes you to the next step. Now, I usually ask the futures question last, but I'm going to make it the next to last question. Um, and I'm going to ask it in a specific way um, to each of you. Um, so it's the futures question, but where do you want to see this relationship go? But specifically, what do you want to be able to say, let's say a year from now or two or three years from now even, that you can't say today? Hmm, good question, Dave. I, what I really like is our free practice areas for thinking about advancing cybersecurity maturity. So Dell's whole mission is how do we take customers from where they are today and help them continue to advance to make sure they're staying consistent with all the different threats. That means being able to do things smarter in every one of our practice areas, right? Not only in every one of our practice areas, but all of our products and solutions need to be able to do the same thing. Right. So we start off with secure supply chain. Right. And that's for all of our products. So that's really good. Right. What are some of the next steps? Well, introducing MFA into all of these products. Now it's introducing rules based access. Well, the next thing, because AI is so big, is how do you introduce a component of AI into all of your different business units to make sure that they're, one, they're all talking together, but two, they all have that same level of deep intelligence to be able to pull pull this information out to get the deeper forensics to be able to continue to catch threat actors to really continue to advance that cybersecurity maturity, right? And I think doing that with with a company like Index Engines, who who has put in that time, that effort, and and does those types of things can really help us advance in, in all areas. Now, you have to test and see what's, you know, see, see where it fits and what it can do. But ultimately, that's what we'd like. To do. So it's really a maturity of that triad you'd like to see. Anything you get, yeah, you know, you know, if you study what, what these bad actors are doing, you know, they're, they're in the data center. You know, they leave footprints. They leave a lot of indicators of what they're doing, a lot of patterns of behavior that are unusual from your typical user behavior. And it's separating those out. Um, we've had great success with the, uh, the data protection team at Dell with the Cyber Recovery Vault. Um, customers have been asking for CyberSense to extend beyond that into the production storage side, which is um, those are conversations that are happening fast and furious right now. We should see something there. Um, I, I think Dell having a CyberSense product across the portfolio just extends customer cyber resiliency and, and helps them. And um, you know, I, w I was in uh, speaking with a customer recently, and they were talking. It just came down to trust, and it's like, or who are you going to trust? You know, and I think Dell is is not a bad bet out there, and they've proven it with. Uh, you know, there's dozens of customers recovering from attacks using a cyber recovery vault every week. Well, let me ask you about trust. I mean, how do you engender trust with your with your customers? You can't sip, you can't market it. You can't just say, "Hey, just trust us." What can you tell us to convince our audience that Dell and its partners are trustworthy? Why don't you start? And yeah, so, I mean, I want Jim to answer the ultimate trust question, but I, but I really like that you brought this question up, Dan, because I see so many vendors out there saying, you know, we're a trusted been trusted. We have trusted products. We have to, the vendor themselves don't get permission to say that, right? It's the customer that says, I trust you, right? And so what we try to do is work with vendors like an index engines that help us bring the data, the application, whatever it is that we're doing to make it reliable enough so that it gives you that confidence so that that customer can then in turn say, I trust what I'm doing there, right? That's the goal we're trying to achieve. But we can't, we don't, can't say that. Yeah, we, we, we have um, one of our joint customers is uh, one of the largest cities in the U.S. Uh, protects their subway system. I, a transit system is a high value target for cyber criminals. That's like, they would love that. Um, he spoke at a conference. He said they get 100,000 attacks per day, right? <laughs> Which many of them are, are not, you know, there's somebody trying to spoof a password, but Hundred, so it, it's a war for them. You know, they've had meetings I think, with executives of our organization with Dell saying, "I am building a, you know, I need to trust you, and I'm building, our, I'm betting on you guys, and you need to be there for us." And 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 and, and we're there, and it's it's in production, it's working well. But I, I was in, uh, I was at a customer event two weeks ago, and this customer spoke about his previous company where they didn't really have a cyber strategy. They didn't have, you know, cyber recovery or cyber sense, or they just had backup software. Um, they were attacked. Um, he, he got, you know, notification on a cell phone about MFA approvals. And he, on Saturday, he's like, that shouldn't be happening. Went in, backups were wiped out. Um, he said it was the worst 33 days of his life. He had to rebuild 
everything. Um, he said, we didn't have a strategy. He, he's since moved to another company. Um, they purchased Cyber Recovery with PPDM and CyberSense. Um, he goes, every day my data is replicated in this vault. I get an email at 8 a.m. every morning saying the data has integrity. You're good. He goes, it's the happiest part of my day. Um, <laughs> and so that's trust, right? So you get that, you get that, that response from, from the, the vault saying everything is good. You're covered. So you can go to your CXO, your C, CIO, the governance teams and said, I've got a good copy of data and whatever happens tomorrow, we're good. I wouldn't wish those 33 days on anybody. It's like going back to COVID for a month. <laughs> <I'm thinking. laughs> Guys, thanks so much for coming into the studio. Great conversation. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Dave. All right. And thank you for watching Partnerships for Smarter Recovery, part of our four-part series on making security. Team Sport, this is Dave Vellante. We'll see you next time.